Mm -hmm. I like to watch comedians the way other people listen to music. I like the, the, the ebb and the flow and the way it, and I like, you know, the way they talk. So one day Rodney's on The Tonight Show and he's sweating a little bit like he always does. And I'm watching him, he's a little like this, you know? And he's, he's getting the laughs. And I said to Debbie, our producer, I said, call the paramedics. I think Rodney's having a stroke. She said, what are you talking about? I said, I think he's having a stroke. Just call the paramedics. Just, just call him. Oh, okay. Well, he did have a stroke. And they took him to the hospital. Okay. So I went to see him in the hospital, and he gets out of the hospital. And then another stroke uh, a little while later. And this one laid him out. This is, he was in a coma. So Joan calls me one day, and she says, uh, uh, Jay Rodney's in a coma, and he, he can't see any, I mean, he can't react to anything, but I think he can hear us. So would you, I said, yeah, I'll call car. So I go on, I'm, I'm talking to Rodney, you know. And Joan says to me, and Rodney's lying there. And Joan says, Rodney, uh, she goes, Jay, put your finger in Rodney's hand. Rodney, if you know it's Jay, just squeeze his finger if you can. So I put my finger in his hand, I feel a little squeeze, and I go, Rodney, that's not my finger. Right? <laughs> so, so Rodney does this. And she goes, ah, he moved, he moved. And Joan goes, he moved, he moved. And, and he moved. And I, oh, and I felt so good that I made Rodney laugh, you know? And he didn't, he, he died soon after that. But, but uh, you, I, I, I just remember that. I just remember he went, he went he liked this because he did hear the joke. And it's I thought, always a laugh. Yeah, and, and it, yeah, it's about the laugh. And it was, yeah, it was really a tender moment and uh, just one of those moments that really make, you tell that to some people, go, oh, how horrible. But the comics understand no, what it comic, is. No, comics, what are you I talking mean, yeah, about? It's, it's, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember uh, Patrice O'Neill. Oh, boy, he was a great comic. Pr uh, unbelievable comic. We were at Patrice's funeral, right? And, you know, every, every comic from New York, Jay, came to Patrice's funeral. We're all there. And comics start to go up and, you know, are speaking and saying things just about Patrice. And the funeral slowly morphed into one of the best comedy shows yeah, that, that, that you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm talking Rich Voss, Colin Quinn, Jim Norton, Bill Burr, myself, Keith Robinson, I mean, you, you, you name it. You, Robert Kelly, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. But comics were coming up and giving their best 15-minute sets but involving Patrice. Right. And it really made you understand we speak a language of our own, right? right? right. And, and that language that we speak, always it always involves the laugh. There's nothing more important than the laugh. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's what we always want. And, you know, I think sometimes it's hard for people today to understand that a comic means no real harm. Yeah. He's going after the laugh. And in doing right. so, right. you know, the, yeah. the bullshit can happen. And right. the comic's like, oh, my God, I stepped in it. But he was just trying to go for the laugh I, because no, no, that's, I, that's the I most it. important thing. Give me another comic, right, that that you have had personal experiences with, like that has really impacted your life. Oh, Kevin Rooney. Uh, wow. Uh, oh, there are just so many. Uh, well, Seinfeld, so we all started out together. You know, when we started, all the comics would come to one another's Tonight Show. You know, people think it's like this horrible cutthroat business, but other comics will always get you more work than any agent. You know, Steve Martin brought Johnny in to see me. Wow. And, and Harvey Corman brought Johnny in to see me again. And, uh, you know, I brought uh, Johnny in to see um, uh, Ellen DeGeneres, and, and, and we all help one another. So, yeah. so, Johnny, at this point, you know, in, in this era of when you were coming up, Johnny was the... Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he was the, the mecca. Like, it oh, was... Oh, to the end. Yeah, sure, sure. Wow. Oh, yeah. I wow. Mean, and it was... was, and, it was and, and was Johnny... Was Johnny... Um, was he receptive? Like, was he a guy that that was open about, you know, expressing who he felt was funny or who he thought yeah, was Yeah, well, you have to understand, we were young, we weren't kids, we were young adults in our early 20s. Johnny was a man. Mm. And, you know, I grew up in a house where you, you said, Mr. Carson, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him Johnny. Mm. Uh, Mr. Carson, call me Johnny. Would you? So that was always awkward when I do The Tonight Show with him, because, well, you know, Mr. Carson, I, I, I just felt weird. So when Letterman got his show, and I, I go, hey, Letterman, nice tie, you know, and I could trash him like I would in a club or something, and it, it just became much looser. So there was always a, a reverence and a respect for Johnny that it, it wasn't like he was another comic, he was the comic. You know, it's, it's like Eddie Murphy, to my generation. Oh, sure, yeah. Right? So, 
Eddie would occasionally pop into comedy clubs. Right. He would occasionally pop in and sit in the back. And when Eddie came in, you always knew because comics just kept looking up. Right. Every comic just kept looking up. And the reference was, Eddie's up there. And for some reason, there was a thing that you felt. You felt like if you looked up and you saw Eddie laugh, well, that equaled success. Right, sure. To some degree, it equaled, oh, my God. Well, it did. It did it's a different success. stamp of approval. Yeah, because right? if he liked it. It's, I yeah. mean, it's gold. I mean, there were so many shows. We did Merv Griffin and Mike Douglas. But Johnny Carson was the one that put you on the map. If Johnny laughed, well, then that was, you know. 